we'll say drive motor. Now the symbol for that, most motors it's just a circle with a line inside. And look, that's, that's similar to the coil, right? Because a winding in a motor is a coil. It becomes magnetic just like the water valve. But the drier one will look a little bit more like this. It'll have two windings inside of it. One running winding and one starting winding. It takes both of them to get the motor to work. But the starting winding is like first gear in a car. We can use it to get the car rolling, but we can't drive down the freeway in first gear. We have to go second, third, fourth, fifth, whatever. So we can drive at 80 miles an hour on a freeway. So we take out the start winding and only the run winding gets power once the motor gets going. But it takes both windings to get the motor off the ground. So there's three main parts. I said the third part. There's three main parts in the machine that we need in order to drive close. The blower. Oh, well, sorry. wait. One is the heating element. One is the motor. And what is the one thing that is over the whole drive? Controls the whole drive. I said it earlier. The timer. The timer. The timer is okay. the brain. It controls everything. Okay? So, you know, you're like, oh, I'm here just to learn to fix appliances. This is, this ain't gonna help me fix appliances. If you don't have a basic understanding of how that appliance works, and you walk up to it and you watch it run, how do you know if it's doing what it's supposed to do? You know, how do you know if it's working right? You understand what I'm saying? You have to know what parts are in the machine and what they're supposed to do in order to troubleshoot what it's not doing, okay? Because when you go to someone's house, the customer's gonna tell you, hey, my clothes aren't drying. They're not gonna say, it's not getting hot. Very few people will say that. I put clothes in, I come back an hour later, and they're still wet. Did it get hot? I don't know, I turned it on and walked away. You got these people, you know, they don't speak proper English, they're older people, they just press a button, they don't know. They don't wanna to talk to you about their dryer, just fix it. So you have to go there, you have to turn it on, and you have to see. So you have to see, okay, I turn it on, I see the drums turning, I see the clothes turning, I see the air is flowing out, I see there's heat, no, there's no heat, okay. Now I see it's running and it's not getting hot. We got to troubleshoot. Okay, but troubleshooting begins with understanding the product, mm -hmm. knowing what it's supposed to do when it's working properly. Then we can look at it and say, I can see it's not doing this. One of the first things I had to do when I learned appliances, I went through the base electricity and I went through the safety. Now I went into laundry. First machine I got were washing machines. All right, first thing I had to do was hook up a washing machine. I hooked it up. Second step was to sit in front of that washing machine and let it run through a cycle from beginning to end and write a 250 word essay on what it did. And I said, how the heck am I gonna write a 250 word essay? It, it filled up with water, it washed and it drained out and it's done. How am I gonna write a 250 word essay? Well, it filled, how long did it fill? How long did it wash? What did it do after it washed? It drained. What did it do after it drained? It spin. Guess what? It filled up a second time. Why did it fill up a second time? For rinse. It agitated like wash, but now with no soap. And then it drained, and it final spin. But you have to know those cycles in order to fix it. And the same thing with this dryer. We're gonna get into some real heavy stuff before I get finished with this lecture today about the diagrams and the parts and everything, but we need to know. These are the three parts we need to work in order for the dryer to work. There are other We will find it on the, uh, on the motor. On the motor. So you guys look at your motors. 
And I'm just going to borrow this for a second. I'll let you look at it. This box here is the centrifugal switch for the motor. I'm trying to get on the camera too so you guys can see later. So this is a centrifugal switch. This here are the windings in the motor. So that's what those curly lines are. And there's two of them in here. You won't be able to see the two individual when you look at it, but these are the windings. And this is a centrifugal switch. Now it activates by this little collar right here. So I want you guys to look at it when I'm done. If you look up in this general area here, when you move this collar back, you see how I'm moving it with my fingers? Moving it like that, you'll see a piece going up and down on that collar, and that's that switch going up and down. There's moving switches inside here. Take a look at it. You guys take a look at yours. Now this one here is a little bit different, mm -hmm. but still a centrifugal switch here. Mm -hmm. And this is a centrifugal switch. This is a lot older style. And it also has the same shifting mechanism right here for the switch. And it's located like right in here. Okay? So if you guys take a look at that. What was that switch you were on? The black collar right here. Right here, this black collar, just yes. push it in. Okay, I'll push it on the other side, but the same thing. Now, if you look up, you can see a piece resting on top of it, like a little white piece of plastic. Yes. Now, when you slide, you'll see it dropping down. So that's the switch going up and down, just like when you turn a light switch on and off. Okay? So when the machine's off, the position it's in right now is the off position. And the switch would be closed this way. Okay? And that's completing a circuit to the start winding, which is the bottom. And the run winding, which is on the top. When the motor gets running, this switch changes position and does this. So here's the motor. And if you notice, the switch was on your left, but when the motor got running, the contact in the switch has moved towards the right-hand side, okay? And what did it do? When power came in here, if you look at this symbol, when power came in, it goes through both windings, and when it comes out, this bottom one jumps up here, and then both of them, the power runs out. So both of them get power at the same time when we turn it on. Once the motor gets going, that little black collar that I slid, showing you that it moved, that gets moved by the spinning force of the motor. There's a little weight on it that throws it out. And it shifts the switch over in this direction. What happens to this winding on the bottom? It don't get power no more, does it? Because at, there's no connection there no more. So power can't go through it anymore. So the only one getting power is the top one, which is the run line. Okay? I don't know how that happened. I was, I was wondering. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I, I haven't had luck with these boards sometimes. But I'm going to take this motor out of the diagram at first. Uh, uh, I'll move it off to the side for now. Mm -hmm. Let me just do this here. I'm just going to move it. Oops. Move it up over here out of the way. And bring this one down here. Because I just want to complete the circuit for the motor, okay? So, we got a motor. We need the motor to run to dry the clothes, right? Mm -hmm. What tells the motor to come on? The door switch? No, so you close the door and the dryer starts running? The timer. You turn the dial the timer and the ti dryer oh, the starts running? Start. The start switch, start, right? Start switch, yes. So we have to have a start switch. So I'm just gonna start labeling them. Start switch, mm -hmm. let me, uh, my pen here. Is it is it on the pen? So we need a start switch. So these are the things we need to add to this motor to make it work. So what else do we need? What tells the dryer the timer. it's done? The timer, right? We need a timer. So start switch starts the dryer. The timer turns the dryer off, right? It also controls the heat, yeah. controls other things, the temperature that the right. machine's going to be running at or whatever. But 
The start button starts the dryer, the timer ends the dryer. Okay, what else do we need? The door switch. We need a door switch. Mm -hmm. Why do we need a door switch? Couldn't it run without it? Yes. But then it would just keep running if you open the door? Yeah, and it wouldn't be safe. Imagine if a, a, a child was to jump in there while it was running, or a cat. It would be a lot of fun. <laughs> Be interesting for a little least. while. <laughs> for a little while. It'll be interesting to the least. Okay, but we need a door switch. A door switch is there for what? For safety. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all of these controls and these parts have their purpose. Mm -hmm. And you need to know what parts control the motor. Why? Why, do, why, are, we, why are we talking about all these parts? That's why the, the dryer start working. Not necessarily the dryer start working, but the opposite. If you're going to go to a dryer and the dryer's not running, well, you could check the motor, right? Because the motor's supposed to run. Mm -hmm. But if the motor checks okay, then what do you check? Well, we can check the start the switch. switch. We can check the timer. We check the door switch because if any one of them are bad, a motor ain't going to work. Mm -hmm. So we need to know what parts Oops. in the machine control the control what loads in the machine because it, it, if a dryer is running and not heating do i check this timer maybe yeah. do i check the door switch no maybe no. not we have to look at the circuit first because mm -hmm. if the heat down the went through the door switch yes but we don't know yet we're building the circuit now what about the start switch The dryer's running, not heating. Do we have to check start switch? No. Do we have to check door switch? No. no. Press start and the dryer's not running. What's the first thing you do? I'll make sure that it's not a true breaker. So how do we do that? How do you how do you check that the breaker's not tripped? You just go to the breaker box, you check it, see whether or not it's flipped in the right position. Could the breaker still be in the on position, but the breaker could be bad? Because the breaker is just a switch. Just because the, the breaker is thrown to the other side, does that mean the contact inside the switch is good? I've seen breakers in breaker panels that didn't have a very good tight connection. Over a period of time, they burn up inside. And the connector that they connect to, the bracket in the panel, gets corroded. And if you push on the breaker a little bit or move it a little bit, it works. And you're like, oh, it don't work because the breaker burned up. On the outside, it looks great. Inside where the electrical is all connected is burned up. Mm -hmm. So how do we prove that? When you walk up to a dryer, customer calls you out. You go to the customer's house, you turn the timer to time dry, you press start, nothing happens. Open and close the door, you press start, nothing happens. You say, okay, breaker could be bad. Fuse in the house could be bad. What's the first test we make? Check the power. Where? At the, the outlet. The outlet. The outlet. At the outlet. Mm -hmm. You go right to the wall mm -hmm. where the outlet is. Mm -hmm. And you check to make sure you got power there. Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't start tearing the machine apart yeah. and just start randomly testing things yeah. to find out why the dryer's not working. Yeah. We want to make sure that there's power at the wall because if I have power at the wall, then the machine should work. Yeah. And the problem's in my machine. Well, the students came up and mm -hmm. up the food. I didn't know. I'm recording, right? Can yeah. I restart it? Yeah, you're okay. fine. You're fine. <laughs> so um, you have to make sure you have power. Now, if we got power and the motor don't work, well, any one of these components can be bad. Now, troubleshooting those components, we're not going to talk about yet. Step switch. Well, we're not going to talk about troubleshooting the machine yet. Oh, okay. Because we're going to stop the recording, okay. and now what you guys have to do is get some wire strippers, we're going to get some wire terminals, and we're going to cut pieces of wire, and we're going to build this complete circuit with the parts you have on the table. And we're going to see them in the order you see them here. Okay. So we can talk about troubleshooting. Any questions? Okay. Wire strippers, wire terminals from the cabinet,